Hello there. I know it's been a while, but I wanted to get on here and talk about a few things tonight. Uh, just to get it out of the way, I won't be talking about anything relating to new game development in this video, so sorry to disappoint if you were hoping for that. But anyway, from the video's title, you may have gathered that I have actually been living in Japan for six years, as of last Monday, April 2nd. I actually came over here on April 2nd, 2012, I remember landing, being picked up at the airport, and going to sleep shortly after arriving, getting ready to start my new experience the following day. Uh, I even went back and watched my mini announcement video that I made back around that time when I was preparing to come over here. In that video, uh, I actually said that I would be here for a minimum of six months with no real expectations at that time. Uh, I guess doing the math, I've been here for... Yeah, 12 times that as of now. The magnitude of that is really quite a lot to take in now that I'm actually saying it out loud. But basically, I wanted to just talk about my experiences, uh, reflections, what happened, what's been happening, and yeah, maybe what will hopefully happen. So anyway, let's get right into it. Uh, first, uh, I wanted to say that I'm recording this with some new equipment, so hopefully things will actually look and sound better than they did before. Um, so, in fact, I'd appreciate it if some of you could give feedback on those aspects of the video. But anyway, uh, so let's just get into it. I've also prepared some notes, so I'm going to be looking at those from time to time. Please bear with me. So, yeah. Let's begin. So the first place where this really started was back around 2010. 2010 itself was a year where a lot of things really changed for me. Uh, some may remember that it was actually the year Battle Kid 1 did come out, but uh, more so than that, it was also my first experience with some game conventions and, quite honestly, just being a little more adventurous with things at the time. Uh, by nature, I really am a very introverted person. I've done my best to deal with that more and more, and it's improved, at least I like to think it has. Less anxious in general. It's still hard, but you know, I'm doing what I can. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But anyway, back to 2010. Uh, at that time, I was taking some Japanese classes at the University of Toledo, my home university back in Ohio. I re-enrolled to take some more classes in an effort to better improve myself you know, and hopefully my job potentials, job prospects. In the summer of that year, I got to participate in a three-week program that allowed students, students from the university, to come over and experience Japan, which was a very good experience for me. You know, and I would think, you know, if you're interested and you're able to experience another country at some point, you know, do it. Don't hesitate and do what you can to make it a reality. Anyway, after the experience, I wanted to come back here and try a few things out for a little bit longer. You know, much more longer than three weeks, of course. So, uh, I tried applying for some jobs, you know, but if you don't really have any experience here, you know, chances are you're probably not going to be able to get one of those. You know, your chances are next to nothing, in my opinion. I'm not saying that's impossible, it's just, you know, what I believe. But anyway, I eventually needed another plan, and that pretty much unfolded in 2011 and 2010, or 2012. So I came here, and I started out as a student studying Japanese at a specialty school called Yamasa, which is located in Okazaki. And Okazaki is located in the town, or not the town, the uh, prefecture, Aichi. The first year, I had to start out with the beginner's class, which at the time I felt was a little easy at first, given my previous studies that I did at the university. But you know, I've, one thing that language study will teach you is that it's never easy. Uh, and it pretty much never will be a second language. Uh, but gradually, it became tougher. The classes became tougher and quite challenging as things went on. Uh, around the start of 2013, I wanted to get some kind of job. You know, I was... Not really, uh, I was kind of running out of money at the time, so that makes sense. But uh, as a student, all one can get, um, as per the terms of the student visa, are part-time jobs, working a maximum of 28 hours a week. 
which was fine. Uh, so I went to an organization which is called Hello Work. Very appropriate name for an organization, you know. And I've actually used it for both of the jobs I've gotten here. So if you are here, um, you should check it out. So anyway, the place I wound up getting hired at was Nova, which is an English conversation school, or an Aikaiwa, as they call it. Uh, before, when I said I was introverted, uh, I definitely came out at this job. Uh, you know, just having to talk with people for five to eight hours a day was really hard at first. Uh, I eventually got better at it, though. The experience did help me with uh, getting over some of my introverted qualities. I mean, sure, there are some still there, and to some extent, um, I think they probably always will be there. But I really liked dealing with the students, especially as time went on. Um, I'd say the biggest challenge for uh, some of the classes were there were situations when sometimes the students themselves were introverted. And, you know, in that case, it's like, you know, introvert versus introvert. So exchanging conversations in that kind of situation can be tough as maybe, you know, I'm not really sure what to say, nor is the student sitting across from me. But, you know, thankfully, there weren't a whole lot of the situations and we got through it. Uh, I do remember when I started um, lessons that uh, there was some, we always like to do free conversation before actually starting the textbook lessons. And I would open those lessons by saying, uh, or asking the phrase, you know, what's new? You know, what's new with you? And it's also a phrase many students learned and they really liked the phrase. So it was a very good way to open the lesson. So um, yeah, definitely give that a shot if you're teaching English. Uh, but anyway, I stuck with Nova part-time until the end of 2013, where I eventually got to go to full-time. In fact, I was actually thinking of leaving there because I had requested to become full-time earlier on and was denied, but admittedly, much to my luck, several of the teachers were leaving, so I got to become full-time because of that. I didn't necessarily like that those were the circumstances in which I was becoming full-time, but, you know, uh, once I got the work visa, I knew I could change if I wanted to, so I took it. So now, uh, that takes us into 2014, where I moved to where I currently am now. So I'm living in the city of Nagoya, which is about 30 minutes from Okazaki by train. The uh, Nova office was... Uh, still a commute like it was before, but at the time, and I didn't really mind it so much. The first year in the new city was pretty hard, though, as I really didn't have anything. I didn't have any furniture, and I really had to save money. In fact, um, I didn't even have a bed for about the first three months, so I actually slept on the floor with a futon. Uh, don't recommend that if you can avoid it. But long story short, I stuck with Nova until mid-2015. Up until that point, I was doing what I could to improve my Japanese. Uh, the school I was studying at, uh, Yamasa, it was okay. But after one year, I really, hmm, I really kind of felt tired of being in the school setting. Um, you know, because two years, that's a long time. Just to be doing, you know, Japanese day in and day out. So, but I, I did some self-study with a couple of books. In fact, um, I actually dug a few of them out just to showcase here. Like, um, what do we got here? Grammar, so N2. N2 is the uh, Japanese language proficiency test, uh, second rank. So it's the second most difficult. And uh, this is, vo oh, sorry, vocabulary. And then uh, also N1, which is the most difficult, but still, vocabulary is vocabulary. And I even found some of my old textbooks. Um, like in the beginner's class, you get these uh, Mina no Nihongo. So book one and book two. So pretty basic. Um, and also, these were in the later classes, uh, called the New Approach, 
and then the red book so free advanced course really tough but anyway uh so moving on from there uh the textbooks yeah they were pretty much like an extension of the school setting that um i was at but um in addition to those i came up with an alternate method to study japanese and that was actually gaming namely japanese versions of rpgs so having played many of those games in the past you know the english versions of course i already knew how to play them but um now i got to experience them how they originally were made uh and in fact when i was actually at yamasa i was going through final fantasy 5 and 6 on the super nintendo uh the main reason is that those games use kanji in their writing so you actually get to experience the proper writing the proper way of reading things most of the older games only use the phonetic hiragana so in fact looking at those now those are really tough to read you have to really have a grasp of the phonetics of the language just to even be able to understand them but uh yeah needless to say that after uh you know playing those games um you know the first was very very difficult you know playing a game that's not english but, you know, I got engaged with them and, you know, learning mo many new words. Um, certainly, you know, being a game, there's lots of, you know, not so useful words. You know, like, I don't usually go around saying words like, you know, equip armor or spear or things like that. But still, it's interesting nonetheless. You know, you get exposed to all sorts of vocabulary and plenty of useful vocabulary, definitely. Uh, some other games I went through, uh, Suikoden 1 and 2 for the PlayStation. Speaking of which, I heard the original Suikoden 2 in the U.S. is quite expensive now. Um, I got the Japanese version after converting back to dollars. Three bucks. So, I guess U.S. maybe it wasn't as popular, or maybe it's just super rare. I, at the time, I don't know. Uh, some other games were Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 9, game which I've only ever played through once prior to that, Chrono Trigger, and a few others. But, yeah, pretty much thanks to the textbooks that I showed you and as well as gaming uh, you know I was not only entertained but I got to learn a lot so yeah with my unconventional study methods um, I pretty much you know went through that for a while and felt that I had enough Japanese to try working somewhere that isn't an English school so I applied for my current job which I got and started in July of 2015 uh, coincidentally um, I actually showed it here, the uh, N2, the second uh, test. I actually took that uh, two days prior to starting the new job. Um, although I didn't pass at the time, I only got maybe an average score of about 43%, which is way below what you need to actually pass it. But, you know, maybe I should try it again someday. Um, I don't know. So with my current job, it's uh, Japanese every day, and that's ultimately what I would say got me over that sort of intermediate hump, which I feel is really the toughest one to get over, you know, because ah, you have like so many things, so many different topics, you know, and pretty much like everything you learn, there's maybe like five more things you need to learn. But uh, with the job, you know, like I said, Japanese every day, so, you know, Lots of reading, lots of speaking, so lots of practice. In the job, my current duties are making websites, uh, doing some English translation here and there. Uh, some jobs are much easier than others. Um, translating menus is actually sometimes quite difficult because not only do you need to translate, but you need to mm, make it like a sort of, how should we say, like advertisement English. Like you can't just say, you know, this food tastes good. You have to say things like, you know, you know, well, the moment you taste this food, it'll, you know, bring out such a great sensation or something like that. I, I don't I don't remember much of it what I actually wrote, but you know. That's yeah, the job though. Um, but yeah, some other duties also include um, sometimes answering emails in English, you know, with some foreign customers. Not too often, but they come up. 
but uh, also through the job, uh, you know, the main is web design. So I've learned a good deal about HTML and CSS practices. I also get to do a little uh, PHP here and there. Um, sometimes uh, using PHP to help generate pages more quickly, so more efficiently, so making updates to pages. I don't do anything like really advanced, you know, nothing like dynamic pages or account logins. I would be interested in learning that, but um, they already have people who handle that, so I won't be. I probably won't be doing that anytime soon. Um, I do need to brush up on jQuery, though. Yeah, I can do regular JavaScript, but jQuery does streamline a lot of it. But anyway, I'm getting off track here. So uh, that's pretty much been my experience with the job world uh, as of yeah, as of now. Uh, in the personal world. I'm still doing what I can to help with the introverted side, like I said. Um, I go to a lot of meetup events here in the city. And going to those has definitely helped me make a lot of friends. Uh, just getting to talk with people and, you know, basically just having fun. That's the main point of it. Uh, in fact, there's even a meetup which is done weekly in the building next to where I work. And... I, in fact, wound up taking over hosting it as the original host moved away. And we didn't want to cancel the event. We didn't want to stop the event, I should say. So it's a great place to just meet and talk with people, and I get to do it on a weekly basis. In addition to that, um, some other things. You know, I've been exercising here and there. I like to go swimming. I uh, usually do that about once a week, maybe in the summer, a few more times since the pool is open later. I can do about maybe 12 to 1,500 meters in around an hour, then I finally get tired. Uh, of course, the amount I do also depends on my feeling at the time. But, you know, nothing too fancy, but I do enjoy it a lot. I've also used to go to the training room, but, yeah, last summer I kind of hurt my back, so I needed to back off for that for a bit. It's been getting better, though. Um, you know, I guess other things I've been doing, uh, sometimes I play the game of Go, um, I'm only about a 7 or 8 Q, but it's still really fun to play from time to time. Uh, there are clubs here in the city, but most of the clubs there, everyone there is really strong, like the rank of 5 Don or even more. So it's really hard to find people my rank, so I always have to play Handicap Go. But anyway, uh, hmm. as far as the future goes, hmm. You know, just taking it day by day right now. Um, I find that talking about things really helps, though. You know, something's on my mind. You know, I like to discuss it with others. You know, trying to be a lot less, how should we say, a lot less self-conscious about things. You know, just more positive. And, you know, for this video, I wanted to, you know, be positive about everything. You know, keep things as positive as possible. You know, sure, there's always negative things, but, you know, they happen. But, it, you know, I think, you know, dwelling on them isn't really going to help anything. So, you know, try to be positive as much as I can. So, yeah, I think that's all I really have to say for this video regarding my time abroad here. You know, I, I really have enjoyed it so far. And I'm, you know, continuing to, I, I am continuing to enjoy it. And hopefully we'll continue to enjoy it for, you know, as long as I want to be here. So, if you stuck around to this video till now, thank you very much for listening. You know, hopefully I can make some more content from time to time. Maybe if there's something you're wondering about, feel free to ask. Um, if there's enough discussion, maybe I might even make a video about it. I don't know. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, although, uh, please let me know how the video presentation is for this video. So, with that said, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.